Psalm 61 um, is a psalm that is uh, very close to my heart. And um, especially the second um, verse of this psalm is something that I usually would read when I'm going through a difficult time. Um, right now, no, I'm not <laughs> going through a difficult time. But for some reason, I was reminded of this verse. Um, From the ends of the earth, I call to you as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And um, obviously, it's a Psalms of Psalm of David. And, um, you know, he starts off by saying, Hear my cry, O God. Give heed to my prayer. You know, there are times when uh, we pray and then we wonder, is God even listening to this prayer? And I mean, Scripture makes it clear that He listens to every prayer. All our prayers are before Him. He's actually stored in His presence. David even goes on to say that every tear that we cry is stored in His presence. So we can rest, we can be rest assured that our prayers are all also stored in His presence. In the book of Revelation, actually, uh, it talks about the wiles, you know, um, prayer of the saints mixed with the burning coal and stone on the earth. Um, but there are times when we, when, when, when it feels like heaven is like bronze and you, you prayer, uh, prayers are not going through, where you don't feel like, you know, there's this connection. Um, when we face difficult times, um, hard times, to a point where the psalmist is saying here that from the ends of the earth I called you and my heart is faint. Um, I have experienced situations like that where you really feel the heart is just faint. Like there's no more energy to go forward. Like all doors are closed before you. And there is absolutely no hope. And um, I'm sure um, many of you may have faced situations like that or probably are currently going through a situation like that where you feel like your heart is faint. Maybe it's health. Um, maybe it's job situation. Maybe just emotionally you feel drained. Maybe you feel abandoned. But in all of that, um, one thing we have to remember is our God is constant and He's always with us. Um, is it okay for us to just pour out our heart to Him sometimes? And it may sometimes come across as a complaint before God. Here, if you look at it, the psalmist says, From the ends of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. You know, it's the second portion of the same verse. It says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Even though you kind of notice a hopelessness in the first portion when you see, when my heart is faint. But quickly it's just balanced out by the fact that lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And, you know, we could go on about God being the rock and building our uh, house on the foundation on the rock, which is Christ. And I, I don't want to go there. Uh, but you get the point. Even at times when, you know, we, we kind of face hopelessness or we feel like, you know, uh, giving up. We feel tired of the constant struggle that we are facing. We have to remember where we are standing. We're standing on Christ, the solid rock. The foundation is secure. The future is secure. The future is glorious. It is a different uh, perspective when it comes to the Old Testament versus the New Testament. Under the Old Covenant, um, material blessings, physical blessings, you know, tangible things that they could see was a big deal. But under the new covenant, 
we have better revelation of the word. We have better revelation of, we have better understanding of uh, what is going to happen. Um, we have a lot more um, information available to us in the word of God. Um, not everyone had the scripture available to them in the old covenant. But we, in an average American home, I'm assuming there are at least six or seven Bibles. I have a lot more. Um, so word of God is readily available to us, which means that there's a lot of information available to us, which was not available to the Old Testament saints. And to go along with that, we have the Holy Spirit, not just with us, Holy Spirit dwelling in us for a born again child of God. So with that being said, we have a sure foundation. So in the new covenant, the emphasis switches from material blessings to spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus prepared for us in the heavenly places, which we can start enjoying now. You know, book of Hebrews chapter 6, if I'm not mistaken, talks about people who are backslidden after enjoying the spiritual blessings. So it's available for us now. But at the same time, um, you know, when we live on this earth, there are um, material needs. And God will meet our needs. Not our greeds, but He will meet our needs. But there may be times when He may not meet the need exactly as we have desired. But even then, we shouldn't give up. We pray and we ask in faith. And if God tells you to stop praying, you know, a lot of people just give up very easily. And some people just go above and beyond to just grab things from God. Um, I think we need to strike a balance. You know, Paul is told, Paul kept on praying about removing the thorn from the flesh. Um, is that Galatians? Uh, I could be wrong, but you remember the portion you know, where Paul says, Lord, if it's possible, take the stone from my flesh away. And God says, my grace is sufficient for you. So if you're praying about something, you haven't received an answer from God. I would say keep on praying. You can stop praying when God tells you to stop. Otherwise, keep on knocking. Keep on seeking. In fact, that verse, the, the verse that talks about, you know, Jesus said, Ask and it will be giving, given unto you. Knock and it will be open. It's actually talking about ask and keep on asking. That's the actual um, meaning of that, that verse there. Keep on asking. Keep on knocking. So let's not stop. Let's not forget that there is a rock on which we are standing which is higher than us. For you have been a refuge for me, a tower of strength against the enemy. This is David speaking, who has really seen some rough times. And he's saying, Lord, I've experienced your goodness back in the days. And I want to experience that goodness once more. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge in the shelter of your wings. This is a topic that really interests me. And I don't think I have spent enough time researching it and studying it. I did spend some time. The Tent of David is a very interesting topic. Um, I'll request you to go ahead and look it up. Try to research on it. Tent of David is something very different from the tabernacle that Moses set up. And while the tabernacle uh, was still standing, if I'm not mistaken, in Shiloh, um, David pitched a tent for the ark in the city of David. That's called the tent of David. Because you see, David was not a Levite. And he was not allowed to approach the ark. I mean, there were rules and regulations. They followed it. Have access to the ark. And David so longed for the ark of God. That he wanted the presence of God so near. That he pitched a tent for the ark. In the city of David. Um, Jewish traditions are there about. You know. 
um, how we worship before the ark and so forth. Um, there was this affinity that David had towards God and he decided to be in the presence of God all the time. And that's something that really intrigues me. Do we have that kind of a desire? And this is a period where he's going through some serious troubles, but his focus and his desire is for God to draw near to God. He goes, let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you have heard my voice, O God. You have given me the inheritance of those who fear your name. You will prolong the king's life. His year will be as many generations. Now, we know that David lived um, a pretty long life. Um, but his throne, God promised, will endure for many generations. In fact, Christ is the heir of David. Okay. And um, I think in the book of Revelation also it says, you know, David will be the ruler. So he will be like the chief regent or whatever who will reign. Interesting. His prayer, I would say, got answered, didn't it? Obviously, he did not see it in his life, physical lifetime while he was on earth. But it did get answered. And I don't know if he already had an insight about that. Verse 7, he will abide before God forever. Appoint loving kindness and truth that they may preserve him. In a book of Proverbs says, by truth and justice a kingdom, a throne is established. And um, it's something that we are desiring and praying for. That truth and justice will come forth, will be revealed. And um, till the kingdom of Christ is revealed, we continue to pray for that. That truth will prevail, the justice will prevail. But we know that, you know, towards the um, close of this age, we will experience more lies and uh, injustice and oppression, um, all kinds of evil and wicked things. But as a child of God, I don't think we should be giving up hope. I don't think we should be giving up on truth and justice. We have to continue to pray for it, desire for it, ask for it, work towards it. And the last verse is, So I will sing praise to your name forever, that I may pay my vows day by day. If you notice, most of David's psalm end on a positive note. And I think that's how um, our life should be. For a child of God, regardless of whatever we are facing or going through, you know, times won't feel like throwing the towel and you're like, you know, this is it, this is the end of it. My heart is faint. But you know what? Even when the heart is faint, you are on Christ, the solid rock. Even though you are going through the valley of the shadow of death, you will not fear evil. For he is with me. His rod and his staff will comfort me. And I pray that, you know, even if the, the day begins with troubles and worries about many things and you feel like giving up, don't give up. Because God is with you. And you can always end on a positive note. That if God is with me, who or what can be against me? So I really hope and pray that this word encourages you and blesses your heart. Thank you for watching. God bless you.